Welcome back. The objective of this video is to show how we can add, subtract, multiply, and divide functions. We will also explore looking at finding the domain of a particular function. So our first objective is just to show that using our function notation, we can add and subtract and multiply and divide functions where f plus g of x is the equivalent of f of x plus g of x. And same goes for f minus g of x is equal to f of x minus g of x. Um, f times g of x is the same thing as f of x times g of x. And finally the same for division as long as our denominator is not zero. So what this tells us though is what we're in when we are evaluated functions and adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing, we can add or subtract or multiply or divide the functions first and then we can put an input in or we can evaluate them separately and then finally add the results together. Um, so some ways are, some methods are easier than others depending on the numbers, but you have those options to do that both ways is the value here. So in this first example, uh, we're asked to find f minus g of x. Okay, so they, we do have to subtract the function. So we're gonna subtract g from f. So f minus g of x is going to look like this. It's 2x plus 1 minus all of x squared plus 2x minus 1. So we have to be careful with that minus sign. That is fraught with peril. So that becomes 2x plus 1 minus x squared minus 2x plus 1. And we simplify that and we'll get negative x squared plus 2. So f minus g of x equals the opposite of x squared plus 2. And then we're also supposed to evaluate that for x equals 2. So f minus g of 2. We're going to input 2 into our function. Make sure you protect your input with parentheses. So we're going to square the 2 first and then take the opposite. So we get the opposite of 4 plus 2 equals negative 2. So f minus g of 2 equals negative 2. Okay? Now we could, if we wanted to, as I was saying earlier, we could take f of 2 and subtract g of 2. And we should get the same answer. So f of 2 would be 2 times 2 plus 1 minus g of 2, which would be minus 2 squared plus 2 times 2 minus 1. So we get 5 minus 7. So we do indeed get negative 2. So we get the same answer either way. And that'll also apply to find the product. So find f of g of x or f times g of x. Pardon me, I misspoke there. Find f times g of x, that's not f of g. So we have to multiply those two together. So you might see me put a multiplication symbol in there every once in a while uh, to be super clear. Uh, but that's just gonna be x squared times x minus three. So we distribute our x squared, we get x cubed minus 3x squared. And then find, evaluate the product when x equals 4. So f times g of 4 is equal to 4 cubed minus 3 times 4 squared. So we get 64 minus 3 times 16, which is 64 minus 48, which is 16. And again, 
We can evaluate those separately. We could find f of 4 and multiply it by g of 4. So uh, f of 4 is going to be 4 squared times uh, 4 g of 4, which is 4 minus 3. So we get 16 times 1, which is 16. So it checks out. This example is a little bit different. Uh, we're given f of x and g of x. Uh, find f divided by g of x, then find the domain of f divided by g. And the division actually is a little bit easier than we would think. Uh, f divided by g of x is simply going to be the square root of x divided by the square root of 4 minus x squared. So we're not going to rationalize this. We're just going to set it up and just leave it that way. Okay. Now we want to find the domain of f divided by g. So we want our valid inputs here for both the numerator and the denominator. And we can, what we need here is the intersection or the overlap of the valid inputs. Okay. So for our numerator, our square root function, okay, that has to be 0 or a positive number. So x here has to be greater than or equal to 0. So if we were graphing that on the number line, uh, it would look something like that. Okay, And then for our denominator, that one's going to be a little bit more challenging. Uh, for the square root of 4 minus x squared, well, 4 minus x squared has got to be greater than or equal to 0. Okay, And our critical points here are going to be 2 and negative 2. So we have 2 minus x times 2 plus x is greater than or equal to 0. So we have critical points at plus or minus 2. And on this square root one, we will have to evaluate the three regions. So we need to see what happens here to the left of negative 2, between negative 2 and 2, and greater than 2. And we can do that by just choosing a quick test point. If I put negative 10 in to my function, now and remember, we've got to have a positive result here. So if I put negative 10 in and I square it, I'm going to get 100, 4 minus 100, I'm going to get a negative answer. So that region is no good. Okay, that's going to provide a false answer. So if I try 10, let's try out here on the far right, I'm going to get the exact same thing. I'm going to get 4 minus 100. That's going to be a negative result. I can't take the square root of a negative number. So that region is not going to work. I'll do a real quick check of 0. I get the square root of 4. That works, so these values work. So I've got x is going to be uh, greater than or equal to negative 2 and less than or equal to 2. Now we need the intersection of these two graphs, or the overlap, and from our graph above, we only have the values greater than 0. So the intersection, we need the areas that are both red and black. Okay, Our red region, or what was between 0 and negative 2. So our final answer here is all the values that are between 0 and 2. So our domain in this answer our domain is equal to the values between 0 and 2 inclusive. So that is the introduction to combinations of functions. And we'll get some more practice with that when I see you in class.